Hello, I'm Anika from May to Sew, and welcome to our Beginner's Crash Course in Sewing. Now this is the first of five tutorials that we've put on for you, and the idea of this course of five tutorials is to help those of you that maybe are new to sewing, um, and you want to sort of take your sewing to the next level, or those of you that have been sewing for a while and want to learn some sort of tips and techniques and ways of doing things that might make your sewing more professional. So we're going to start today by looking at the sewing machine and really going back to basics. We're going to be looking at threading the sewing machine, winding a bobbin, looking at what thread you should be using, um, what needle size to use, um, and also sort of changing the needle and changing the foot. So let's get started. So we're firstly going to be looking at the thread that you should be using for your sewing machine. Now, I tend to recommend 100% polyester thread for the majority of projects, and that's the best thing to start with as a beginner. Now, you will have found that your machine may have come with some threads, um, you may have picked up some sort of cheap polyester threads, and they will be absolutely fine to work with when you're starting. Um, generally speaking, the cheaper polyester threads are slightly fluffier in texture, and you will find that you can probably break them with your hands. Um, so they're perfect for sort of, you know, everyday jobs, and when you're beginning, you're trying things out, when something isn't maybe really important, that it looks really professional, and that it lasts. So if you are moving on to making things that you want to last, you want them to, you know, to be very strong, the thread that you're sewing with, um, the thread that I tend to use on a sort of daily basis um, and that I'd recommend is the Gutemann 100% um, polyester, it's the Gutemann Sew All thread. Okay, um, and this is a very, very strong and smooth thread, so you'll find that you can't break it in your hands as well, um, and therefore it's perfect for sort of jobs that need to last um, and giving that really professional finish to your items. Now this thread comes in numerous different sizes depending on what you're working with and numerous colourways. So it's really what you need for your job. Um, in terms of the top of the spool, you'll see that they're different colours. Now this is one thing to really point out for when you are going to buy your thread. Now the smaller sized spools I believe are cream and the slightly larger ones have a white top. So if you're looking for the 100% polyester, it's a cream or a white top that you're after. Because Gutemann threads do come with lots of different colour tops, you can get blue, you can get grey, I believe you can get green. These are all different threads for different uses. So if you're looking for the 100% polyester, just make sure you get the white or the cream so that you're not disappointed when you get home. So hopefully we've sort of gone over the thread that you should be using. Next we're going to look at the sewing machine needle and the size that you should be using. So looking now at the sewing machine needle that you should be using in your machine. If you've purchased a new sewing machine, you probably will have had a pack of needles that would have come with the machine and they'll be perfect for you to be using if you're a beginner. If you've picked up a second hand machine and it's come with some needles, I would probably recommend picking up another pack because obviously you won't have know how much they've been used and in what condition they're in. So. I tend to work with the Schmetz um, sewing machine needles. I get on very well with these. And in terms of sort of the average size of needle, you're going to be working with an 8012 or a 9014. And that's the metric followed by the imperial number. Now, the 8012, 9014 will be perfect for use on your cottons, your poly cottons, your linen, your lightweight upholstery fabrics. And those are really the fabrics that, as a beginner, you're going to want to work with. You don't want anything overly complicated that's going to put you off your new hobby. But what if, as you progress, you want to go to lighter weight fabrics? Lighter weight fabrics require a smaller needle size, so you're going to want to pick up a 7511 or potentially smaller than that. And there'll be fabrics like silks and things like that. For heavier weight fabrics, so say denims or heavyweight canvases or upholstery fabrics, you're going to want to go to a larger number. So that's going to be a 116 or a 110, 18 and so forth. So average size is an 8012, 9014. Smaller sizes are for lighter weight fabrics. Larger sizes are for heavier weight fabrics. Hopefully that helps you decide what needle you should be using for the job. Now the other question I often get asked is how often do you need to change the needle in the machine? I don't tend to abide by sort of the manufacturer's rules on so many hours of sewing. I think that most of you will probably not know how many hours of sewing you've put in to 
the, um, the project that you've been working on with that needle. So what I would recommend, if you're starting a new project that's really, really special, or you're starting a project in, say, lightweight fabric, then I would recommend that you do start with a fresh needle. But most of the time, I tend to check my needles, check that it's not bent. You can lay it down on a flat surface and check that it isn't bent. And I always test my fabric before I start a project. So put your fabrics through the machine, check that the thread is okay for the fabric, and check that the needle, the stitch length, all of those things are going to be fine for your job. If you do that, you should find then that if the needle is too small or too large for the job, and you should also find then if maybe there's the needles become a little bit blunt, you'll find that it may scag or pucker the fabric slightly, that will usually mean that either the needle is blunt or you need a smaller needle for the job. So as I said, I don't tend to abide by the manufacturing rules, but just double check before you start, always test your fabric and see how you get on. So now we're going to move on to looking at the sewing machine. So firstly, a quick look at the machine that we're going to be working with. Now this is a Husqvarna Viking, and this machine in particular is an Emerald 116. However, I believe that there is also a 118 and a 122 in the same series. Now I do understand that you may not have the same machine as this, and that is absolutely fine. What I would recommend though is that you go and find the manual, if you haven't got a manual, then maybe try and download one from the internet so that you can check about what, how the manual suggests you should be threading the machine and winding the bobbin because it can make a difference in how the machine performs. Now I wanted to sort of go through quickly all of the little buttons and bits and pieces that as a beginner you will need on the machine before we get started with winding the bobbin. So. To start, this is our key little dial that we need to know about. This is what stitch you are going to be stitching. And you'll see here, this is the list of stitches with the corresponding number that corresponds to the dial here. Now below that, this is the length of the stitch that you will be stitching. And the little green dial up here is the width of the stitch, okay? So as a beginner, these are the key things. You want to know what you're stitching, how long the stitch is and how wide it is. Okay, now another thing to point out is this button here and this is the reverse or backwards button on the machine and you will need to hold it down to use it. Okay, and you've also got the hand wheel on the side here which if you were to turn towards you would allow the machine to stitch. So that can be great when you are a beginner and you're maybe you're worried the machine might go a bit too quickly that you can use that if you need to. Finally, really, um, the only other thing you may come across as a beginner is this dial here, which is the tension dial. Now, with this machine, I believe the manual suggests that you keep it on number four, and I pretty much, have, I don't think I've hardly ever changed it, and number four seems to work with most fabrics. But do check what your machine recommends, and obviously find out where it is if you do need it. Then finally, really, it's just a case of the on-off button. Now, with this machine, that's to the bottom right, and if I flick the switch, the light will go off and then back on again. So I'll join back here in a second and we'll go through how to wind a bobbin and then how to thread the machine. So now we're going to go through how to wind a bobbin on the machine. Now we're going to start by positioning this spool of thread onto the spool pin and we're using the horizontal spool pin here. Now, on this machine, the thread has to be coming underneath from the spool itself, so coming out underneath when you position it onto the pin, like just like that. But I would check your individual manual for your machine and see which way it suggests. Then we're going to be using the spool holder to hold the spool onto the pin. Now, with this machine, they come in different sizes. This is the small one for smaller spools, and this is the larger one for larger spools. Okay, so next we're going to take the thread and we're going to wrap it around from back to front this little tension, silver little tension gauge here. And you need to make sure that you really pull the thread between the two discs and you sort of hear a clicking noise. If you don't, you'll find that your bobbin doesn't wind very nicely because it just won't have a nice tension on it. Okay, next take your bobbin. And here you really need to make sure that you're choosing the right size bobbin for your individual machine. Now with our bobbins, there's a little hole in the top of them and you need to take the thread and feed it from the inside to the outside 
through the hole. There we go. So from the middle to the outside. Next, we're gonna take the bobbin and put it onto this silver bobbin winder here and push down hard. And then we're gonna push the bobbin to the right. Now, before we start winding, there's one last thing we need to do, and that's to pull the hand wheel out at the side of the machine. Now, what this does is stops the machine from sewing whilst you're winding the bobbin, and it allows it to go, therefore, a little bit quicker. So we're gonna hold on to the thread coming out of the bobbin here very tightly, and I want you to wind it for a little, a little while, a couple of winds around the bobbin. Okay, perfect. Now, we can cut off this thread. So just reach in with a little pair of scissors and trim it off just like that. And then we can continue winding the bobbin until you're happy with the amount that's on there. Now, if you're completing the bobbin full for a, a whole project, then if you keep winding, this is the bobbin stopper and this will stop when the bobbin is full, okay? So if I let you wind your bobbins until they're full, then what we're going to do is take the bobbin off the bobbin winder, so we need to push it back to the left and lift it up. And then we can trim the thread off here so that the bobbin is a separate piece and that's ready to go. Now before we start threading the machine, there's one last thing we need to do and that's to push the hand wheel back in so that it will allow the machine to stitch again. So join me back here and we'll start threading the machine. So before we start with threading the machine, I just wanted to talk about um, how you should position the spool onto the machine. Now there are sort of two different types of threads or diff the different way a thread is wound onto a spool. Now the sort of standard method nowadays is this where the thread is very much zigzagging up and down the spool and this is what's called cross wound thread. Okay, the alternative option though is a slightly older method which you don't see as much nowadays where the thread is really one on top of the other, there's no zigzagging going on here, it's very very smooth and this is what's called stacked thread. Now both of these ideally need to be positioned on the machine slightly differently for the machine and the thread to run through the machine happily. So we'll start with this with the standard cross wound thread. Now with this thread Majority of the time, you want the thread really to be coming off the end. So coming off the end of the spool. Now, therefore, this works perfect with the standard horizontal spool pin that we've got here. It also works well if you've got a vertical spool pin that's maybe down at the back of the machine, very low, you'll find that it will again come off the top of the pin happily. If I position that on there just to show you. Again, we'll use the spool holder and pulling on the thread there, that's happily. You're not gonna get caught, that works really nicely. Now, if you're gonna be using the other thread, so that's the stacked thread, you'll find, as an example, if you position this onto the horizontal pin and we put the spool holder on, that this will get caught as you're pulling the thread off and you'll find that as you're sewing it will get caught and it just won't run through the machine as nicely. So what you want to do instead for the stacked threads is that you want them to sit on a vertical spool here. Now with my machine I've got a little hole here and you can get, you'll, you will get with the machine a sort of other spool pin that you can pop on. The manual recommends putting a little bit of a felt circle around the bottom which again comes with the machine and this thread can pop on here and you'll see it should be coming off at a right angle to the spool. So the thread should come off at a right angle to the spool and that will sew much happier in that method. So I'll let you get started by working out how to put your spool on the machine and then join me back here and we'll start to thread the machine. So we're going to start by threading the machine down this area here up to the top of the needle because that will allow you to complete this threading a couple of the times to get used to it and then I can zoom in and show you the needle in greater detail. So I'm going to be using the cross wound thread that we spoke about before and that's on my horizontal pin with my spool holder in position to hold that nice and securely. As we spoke about when we were winding the bobbin, the thread is coming underneath from the spool, so that's all as it should be. 
So most of the time you will have instructions down here, some arrows or something that are really going to help you navigate this area, but I would recommend just checking the manual and checking that you are doing it correctly. So there's a little sort of slide area, you can slide the thread into at the back here where I've got an arrow, so my thread's going to come into that area, and then I'm going to come down this first channel, all the way down there, and then at the bottom I've got an arrow that's going to go across the bottom and allow me to come back up the second channel. So we're going down the first channel, around the bottom, back up the second channel. Next up here we've got this little silver lever. Now this lever will move up and down so if you can't see it turn the hand wheel on the side of the machine and get it to come up so that you can see it. Now the thread needs to go from the right side of this to the left into the little lever and there's a little eye at the front of the lever and the thread literally does need to click into the front of that so that you can really see the thread. Then we're going to come back down this channel and we'll be stopping there ready to move on to the needle. So I would recommend watching that and doing that a couple of times so that you feel comfortable doing it. Join me back here and we will thread the needle. Once you've threaded the top part and you've come down this channel here, you're then going to need to position the thread behind the little groove on the left hand side here. So just into that groove at the top of the needle. Next, to thread the needle, you can either do this by eye from the front to the back, or you can use the little needle threader. To use the needle threader, use your left hand to push it down at the side here. Now you'll need to make sure, these are quite temperamental, so make sure that your needle is as high as it will go. So by doing that, you need to turn the hand wheel at the side to move the needle as high as it will go. Then push down with your left hand, go underneath this little nook here from left to right and in front of the needle. Okay, it's caught at that time. Make sure to col you collect your thread from the back of the needle, not from the front, because you'll, all you'll be doing is to pulling out your little handiwork. Once you've got the thread at the back of the needle, we will tuck that underneath the foot out of the way. Now to position the bobbin, into the machine. We need to open the little bobbin case here. I've got an arrow and a little button that you need to push to the right which will pop open the clear case. Now the bobbin itself, the thread needs to be sitting on the bobbin going counterclockwise to start with, okay? And then you're going to position that in to the little area, okay? And then place your finger on the bobbin grab hold of the thread and pull it so that you're really clicking it back and you're here, you should hear it click, okay? And there's a little groove right in here, a little silver groove that you need it to click into. Now you need to catch the bobbin with the needle thread. So hold on tight to the needle thread and use the hand wheel, turn it one full turn towards you, the needle will go all the way down and all the way back up and then you should be able to pull on the thread of the needle to collect, and there we see, the bobbin thread. Pull both of these threads and tuck them neatly out of the way underneath the foot and you can replace the case for the bobbin. With my case I need to put the left edge in first and then clip the right side down. So there we have the threading of the needle and the insertion of the bobbin. Now join me back here in a second so that I can explain how to remove the foot on the machine and change the needle. How do you change the needle on the machine? Now we spoke about this earlier, changing the needle and the size that you will need. So to change it, you'll need to unscrew the little black screw here. Be careful not to drop the needle in the machine, so be ready to catch it and take it out. There we go. Now, if you want to know what size needle you have in the machine, you should see it etched onto the top part of the needle somewhere. It is very small, so you may need a magnifying glass. To place the needle back into the machine, there is one flat edge or flat side of the needle. You want to position the flat side to the back of the machine, away from you. And when you're positioning it in, you need to make sure to hold onto it tight so that you don't drop it and to push it right up so that it's right up into the 
area up here. Turn the screw to tighten it and to make sure that it is tight and you will obviously need to re-thread this. To remove the foot, you literally push the foot towards yourself and then you would be able to change it. There's a little bar on the foot here. That is what sits onto this white groove. To put it back on, you'll need to line up the bar with the white groove and push them quite hard back together with a click. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you tomorrow for day two.